This has got to be the third time I've tried recording this. For context, the reason why is I was interrupted the first time and second time the uh, the iPad ran out of storage. There are two movies I hold in my hand. One of which I think is amazing. The other of which I think is a disappointment. This one, I think, will go down in history as an absolute masterpiece of cinema and will never be understated as to be an absolute beautiful movie. This one, it's not that it's terrible, it's that it's a disappointment to the MCU. Allow me to explain. For a story, I'll, I'll sit down for the most of this. For a story to work, you need to have there to be physical and or non-physical challenges to the characters. For example, in terms of if there's fighting in the movie, if it's, for example, a martial art movie, or if it's an action movie, you can't just have there be a button that the, the person hits on the computer, so to speak, and then they win. That, 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 just, that cannot work. That cannot work for a physical. It also can't work that, essentially, if you're making a movie about Mike Tyson, you can't have the movie build up in stories like, oh, so one final challenge, one final fight, it's going to be an amazing fight, and it turns out to be a five-year-old. Because if it turns out to be a five-year-old who's the final fight, well, everyone knows he's going to win, and it's not really going to be interesting. I mean, it might be funny, it might be, like, the premise, it's, it's funny, the premise behind it, but it's, it's, it's not got any tension behind it, because you know who's going to win. And before we continue any further, I must state that I usually end up making videos on my YouTube channel, not the original intention on my YouTube channel, but just, oh well. I usually end up making YouTube, cha YouTube videos on this channel for essentially trying to help kids that go to a martial art club that I help teach on a Friday night, try to help teach them this is how you do this punch correctly, so to speak. Those kids might be watching this video. This video isn't made with you in mind, so if you're not allowed to watch videos that have swearing in them, please click off the video. Or, if you are going to continue watching it, don't, don't tell your parents that you watched a video with me swearing, please. I don't want to essentially this to come back round to the, um, to essentially come back round to the club and then me getting banned. Thank you. Now, the thing is, is there's one character in the comics that I can't stand for some of their attitudes and how authoritarian they are, but it does give them weaknesses, it's just I would not be able to be their friend. And they've recently, essentially, if you will, come out as a villain in the comics, which is kind of funny, so to speak, but I'm of course talking about Captain Marvel. Now, Captain Marvel... Okay, how to word this? In the in the movies, they made Drax a lot weaker than he is in the actual comics because essentially, in the comics, he can take out Thanos by himself, and that would really kind of ruin the story. It's a case of imagine if Infinity War, oh, Drax just killed Thanos by himself with one punch. What we're gonna do now for the rest of the movie? That'll be that. So that's why they need to make him weaker. And at the same time, maybe you need to make some characters stronger. For example, Captain America, Steve Rogers, well, he needs to be strong enough to actually hurt Thanos with a punch, otherwise why would we have a movie? Thanos would just walk towards him as Steve is just trying to do punch after punch after punch while Thanos just is laughing in his face. You know, it wouldn't be the best kind of thing in the world. So you need to make Steve stronger as well. But Steve is strong enough, but not made so overpowered that it takes away from the movie. Captain Marvel, though... Well... If you have had some life decisions that you've regretted, like myself, and you went to go watch the movie Captain Marvel, I'll never be able to forgive myself for watching it, but that's beside the point. You will know, and if you've not watched it, I'll explain it to you, you will know that um, essentially every single fight that she went into, she was so overpowered that it's just a case of, well, she wins because she's stronger than you. Fuck you, that's why she wins. Because she's better than you. And the thing is, that can work in a story, 
if you have a good enough writer that knows what they're doing. For example, there's this anime and manga and originally a webcomic called One Punch Man. One Punch Man, the premise was Saitama just wins in every fight in one punch. He just has to punch you once and he wins. And you might be thinking, well, how is that going to make for a good story? If he wins every single fight with just one punch, you know who's going to win, so that takes away the tension. Yes, it does. Except, what if the whole point of the story isn't a physical challenge for him to overcome, but an internal challenge? For example, the fact that he no longer has a physical challenge bores him out of his mind. Imagine how boring it is where that you never have to try again for anything. You just automatically win at everything and anything you do, and it's just boring. How long would you be able to do that before you went insane? All of a sudden you start to think to yourself, oh, maybe this is where the, the whole challenge that his character must overcome comes from. It's this thing in writing called the hero's journey, essentially overcoming their weaknesses, whether it be physical, whether it be internal, whether it be both. The, the whole point of the hero's journey is that they have to have weaknesses. At the very least, they have to have internal weaknesses to do with their personality, or to do with their past, possibly trauma, um, stuff like that. And then depending on the type of story, for example, if it's an action story, or if it's shown in anime and manga terms, they can have physical weaknesses and limits that they have to overcome as well. That's the whole point of the hero's journey, it's, it's a term in writing. In the comics, Captain Marvel has the hero's journey, in terms of trying to deal with her alcoholism. If you want to know, essentially she's so alcoholic that she makes comic book version of Tony Stark, Iron Man, look reasonable and responsible. That's not a good thing. That is really not a good thing. You know you're doing something wrong when you make that guy look responsible and reasonable. And she also has physical weaknesses. For example, in the comics, she wants to try to fight Thanos in her binary form, which is her strongest form, and with one jab she was knocked unconscious. That means that, uh, well, okay, maybe she could fight Thanos in the future if she gets stronger and actually trains her abilities, tries to understand how to use her abilities better. That's a physical weakness. Part of her hero's journey she has to try to overcome. She can train to get better. But in the MCU, in the MCU, she is the strongest character in the whole movie to the point where, in One Punch, she wins every single fight. Like One Punch Man, except... She has, no, she has no internal weakness to balance this out. This ruins things. Now, in her own standalone movie, it was annoying enough. But the thing is, is this can work if she's humbled. By this, what I mean is, imagine if she wins every single fight with just one punch, except at the beginning of the movie, they go to the garden, I think it's called, that planet where um, uh, the injured Thanos is and uh, they go to subdue Thanos. What if she gets injured by the injured Thanos? Okay, just, just hear me out here. She gets punched in the face and loses a tooth. It's, it's nothing major, it doesn't change her life forever, it doesn't mean that, that, that just the movie just ends and she's, she's dead. It doesn't end with her dead in the movie. It's just, what if she's shown she's not as strong as she thinks she is? And then throughout the movie, it's just to work on this idea that I'm not indestructible, I'm not invincible, I'm not the best thing in all of existence. I, I have limits. And that's, that's her internal flaw there. She understands that she's been too cocky, too arrogant, and she needs to overcome her flaws. Okay, okay. That's the internal weakness. And it's also showing the physical weakness that she does rely on her strength. Maybe she needs to rely on it a bit less, because it's not as infinite as she thinks it is. Maybe as well, maybe, just maybe, she should actually work on trying to be strategic as well, and also improve her strength as well. All of a sudden, you've got a character arc there, you've got a hero's journey. Also as well, then it would show back in the movie, like her original movie, there was this metaphor of her being knocked down and then getting back up. That would actually really work for the MCU version of Captain Marvel, I'm just saying. However, I really hate 
Captain Marvel as a character, not just in the movies, but in the comics. And I have multiple reasons for that, but I would just ramble on and on and on and on and on and on and on if we were to go there. So let's just say, what if we were to remove her character from the movies altogether? Because they really only put her in the movies for a political statement. And uh, if you want more proof of this, just look up on the on the internet how many people were actually buying Captain Marvel comics. No one was. There was no popularity for her character. So when you hear people um, who work on the Captain Marvel movies and the uh, the Avengers movies saying, like, oh, she's one of the most popular heroes. No, she fucking isn't. She really fucking isn't. Everyone hates her. E e fucking everyone. You have to understand. No one buys her comics. Her comics are awful. No one likes them, no one's interested, no one ever buys her comics. She's not popular. At all. They just put her in the movies to try and make a statement. And that statement essentially is, girls are strong. And the thing is, is in the context of how you write something, that can be a good message. But when you make essentially, oh well, she's so strong that she defeats everything without struggling, the message, no, I have to disagree. That, that really ruins the message behind it. And the thing is, is, what's her name now? Sorry, I sometimes, I'm sometimes forgetful of names. You have Scarlet Witch, who, yes, she did, if you will, humble Thanos a little bit, but I'm not really as, if you will, annoyed with her doing it, because she wasn't just introduced in one movie, and then in one movie she's just the strongest character in the whole fucking universe, and then just instantly wins every single fight without struggling. She was introduced back in Age of Ultron, and she is an established character. I'm gonna go off the assumption now and say, if you were the fan of an anime and manga that I've quite liked for a long time, you might be able to tell by my YouTube name, an anime and manga called Bleach. Let's say in the final arc there was a new character introduced, a new character who just started off as a normal human with no abilities. And then in three chapters he just defeated the final boss. That is Captain Marvel. That is how she feels to long-time fans. Now, let's say instead of this, in, in the context of this, uh, this Bleach anime and manga, let's say you have a character who, after the first two arcs, is introduced to the story. And she is, we'll make it a she, like a more going on the analogy. This character is, yeah, she starts off reasonably strong, but can be overpowered by some of the more powerful characters in the context of the story. But they keep training and learning that the ins and outs of their abilities, and by the time they get to the end of the story, when we've seen them grow and become stronger, all of a sudden, then they can overpower the final boss. You see, that's that's more that's more appealing because we've actually seen their hero's journey. Going back to that, if you have someone who doesn't have a hero's journey and has, has no mental weaknesses whatsoever, just defeat the final boss with no difficulty whatsoever, it's really annoying. No one likes it. I'd have much preferred it if Iron Man or Tony or um, or Thor were to be the one who humbled Thanos, but we'll get to that in a minute. So let's take the assumption that Captain Marvel does not exist, and this whole girl power message in the the uh, the movies isn't creeping into everything. There's probably going to be a fucking A Force movie. If you don't know what A Force is, it's where they took all the female characters and made an Avengers team out of women only, and it's, it's really fucking annoying and weird. It's, it's, it's really cringy. No one, no one likes the A-Force movie. No one likes the A-Force comics. Anyway, um, let's say that Captain Marvel doesn't exist. Her movie doesn't exist, so therefore her movie does not ruin characters like um, uh, Nick Fury. So Nick Fury's character is as serious ever as ever. He's a good character. And we still find his character interesting, he's still a threatening character who can threaten people with his eye. For context. There's a lot of context to this. Now, with this, we get to a situation where, okay, well Harry, how do people get out of the first part of the movie because Iron Man's been left to die? Well, you'll remember a key part of Iron Man's character is that he builds his way out of every situation. This is even going back to the first comic that he was in. He built his way out of his own death. And if you remember Iron Man, the movie, he built his way out of certain death. His suit is made of nanites. Nanites have been shown in the MCU to repair machinery. 
could he not just repair the machine that is the airship or spaceship that he's in? Could he not just build away that comb? As is the main part of his character? You know, it would kind of call back to his character again? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. So, so, so here's the way my movie starts. Tommy just builds his way back home, and it leaves him nearly dying. So that's, that's why he collapses on the runway when they finally land this thing, and that's why when he's on that, um... What the hell is that liquid called? Plasma that they, they inject you with to, to try and, uh, you know, in hospitals? Um, he's, he, that's why he's uh, on the drip back in the Avengers HQ um, when they're discussing what Thanos did. Um, now, we, we get to the, I believe it's the planet, uh, the garden I think it is, where we, uh, because Captain Marvel doesn't exist um, in, this, in this context, in this better version, it's significantly better. Um, what ends up happening is Thanos is decapitated by Thor, as, as already happened, but remember Thanos is decapitated, and remember the, um, the Infinity War movie, Thanos can be injured, he can be hurt, it's just that he's physically be better skilled and physically stronger, so it's a very difficult task to do. But all this proves he can be beaten. He can be beaten. This is important for later. So, we then have the time heist happen as usual, only I don't want Thor to be fat for as a joke. I want him to be able to redeem himself. So it's a case of he doesn't just instantly go into alcoholism and just stay that way for the rest of the movie. As soon as he hears there may, there may be a way to redeem himself, he starts working on essentially becoming better. And you see essentially when they're planning everything in and out of how the heist is going to work, you see him exercising and you see the flaps slowly decreasing. So that when he actually reaches his hand out back in the um, Thor The Dark World movie to grab the hammer, uh, the hammer reaches him, and he's significantly less fat than when he was the shirtless fat four scene. And it's a case of, oh, I'm, I'm still, I actually am worthy because I actually put the mental effort into to redeem myself. I put the physical and mental effort into say like, one million and one, one million and two. You know, like for the ridiculous number of push-ups, like okay, I'm losing the fat now type situation. So essentially, Thor's redeemed himself. He's become mentally stronger as a result. We get to what is the snap. Either the Hulk does the snap, and because the Hulk has got really good healing, his arm heals enough that he can actually sort of bring his uh, bring his arm back to usable condition. It's just it's just a case of it might not be work as well for the rest of his life. So I don't I don't mind him having a cast, so to speak, like when it was in a cast at the ending of the movie. I don't mind that. I don't mind that. It's just a case of I don't want him taking out the fight, so to speak. Or, and here's the thing, because I'm not really too persuaded by the idea of it essentially cripples your arm and renders you useless of just snapping your fingers with the Infinity Gauntlet. I don't say it shouldn't be without injury. What I'm saying is I don't think it should just take you down permanently. But Thor has lost an arm in the comics. So... Maybe Thor should be the one to snap. I'm not good for clicking my fingers get what I mean, though. So Thor is the one who does the snap. And because Yolmir can bring you back from the brink of death, he holds both hammers and his arm is healed. It could just be a reference that his arm is lost temporarily and then it could be a reference to the comics. Sort of like how when Captain, uh, when Captain America was going to lift the, the hammer in Age of Ultron and he realised, oh shit, I'll put this down so I don't hurt Thor's ego. It's just a reference, it was a reference to the comics, and now we've got a reference to the fact that, oh, well, he, he could do X. So, it's a, re it's a reference to, oh, well, he lost an arm in the comics, so he lost an arm in this movie, but it was only, it was only like a short while thing before he was healed back. Someone may say it's not the best thing in the world to do that, but each is to their own. So then, the, the Avengers HQ is attacked, as, as we saw in the movie. And what ends up happening then is the following characters all team up, to fight Thanos. Iron Man, the Hulk, Thor, Captain America. These four people, because all of them have a massive, huge, character-based reason for fighting Thanos. Did I just say fighting? I did. Never mind. Now, this ends up 
ends up going more or less the way that the movie went, where everyone is essentially hurt by Thanos in one way or another, because you have to understand, in Infinity War, Thanos essentially had, well, the only piece of armour he was wearing was the Infinity Gauntlet. He may as well have been fighting that entire movie in his underwear and it would have made no difference. In Endgame, he has his dual-bladed sword thing, I don't know what to call it, um, and he has a full suit of armour. All of a sudden, it's going to be significantly harder for him to actually be injured, for him to actually be hurt. It's A lot of people have said, like, oh, well, he's a lot stronger in Endgame, and why is that? Well, it's probably not that he's stronger, it's just that he's actually wearing armour and he has a weapon this time, sort of thing. It's like saying to yourself, like, oh, um, when I fought this guy who, uh, who was essentially just in their normal street clothes, it was a lot easier to fight them and beat them in a fight than when they had a sword and shield and full set of armour. For some reason, when they had a full set of armour and a sword and a shield, it was a lot harder to beat them in a fight. Yeah, I wonder why? I wonder why? Um, so anyway, they're struggling to beat him, and then the whole Thanos summons his army scene happens, and then Avengers assemble. So the, fight, the fight's gone more or less the same, because the Hulk, the Hulk is in this in this fight this time, so, so that's happened. Um, so Captain America has more or less lost his shield. So yeah, that's happened more or less the same as well. However, with two armies involved in this now, you then get not one big massive fight where Thanos is essentially going through one person, and then one person, and then one person maybe, and it's getting closer and closer to the Infinity Gauntlet. We get two fights. One army versus one army on this part of the battle, and Thanos versus the four guys over here. Now, what ends up happening is, I, I, if I was the one who wrote this, I would have structured this scene, if you will, in a very anime way. These two fights are happening simultaneously, but up until the snap, all of this is happening at one part of the movie, so, so this happens for ten minutes, this, this big massive war like battle over here, and then that just cuts. And then we cut over to this fight over here that happens for 10 minutes until snap, and then the two scenes sort of merge into one. But in that meantime, we see this big fight happening over here with everyone struggling to get either the Infinity Gauntlet to Thanos or keep it away from Thanos. And we see that for 10 minutes until we cut over to essentially the big massive fight over here, and one by one, um, Thanos manages to bring down almost everyone, but he's he's starting to sweat a little bit, he's having to work for it. You see, I'm going to take the assumption you've seen a movie called Dark Knight Rises, and if you've not, I'll, I'll just sort of... Re I'll refresh everyone's memory who has seen it and explain something that you've, if you've not. In The Dark Knight Rises, Batman is thoroughly defeated by Bane, sort of like how Iron Man was thoroughly defeated by Thanos in Avengers Infinity War. It shows the hero completely defeated, completely humiliated, and completely broken. However, after Batman is put in a prison where essentially it's a case of, okay, you're being put in this prison and you will die here because it's such harsh conditions from your such lovely, cosy lifestyle that you're just going to die in here. There's no way you'll be able to take it. But instead, Batman does take it. He gets stronger through pain, like Bane does, and when he gets back to Gotham to fight Bane, Bane has this sort of, if you will, surgical mask on his face that essentially stops the pain from these horrific injuries he got in his prison. The more aggressive Bane is, the, ang the, the angrier he gets and the harder he will fight until the pain gets too hard for him that he can't actually focus under the pain and he just kind of collapses. Despite everything that's happened, Batman starts to overpower Bane and he hits the mask a couple of times, and all of a sudden the mask starts to break. He goes berserk, and he starts punching at Batman so hard that concrete pillars used to hold up entire buildings are being damaged by Bane's punches. But still, Batman then digs deeper, getting stronger through his own pain at the prison that he was at, and just hits Bane even harder to the point where he can no longer take the pain, and drops down to the floor, humiliated, crushed by the person that he previously crushed. It's essentially the whole hero's journey, and now the villain has been humbled, he's been brutally dominated. I want you to remember that, because in Avengers Endgame, how Thanos was defeated is essentially it's cheating. 
essentially the Infinity Gauntlet. Oh, well, I win, I guess. Snap. You're now dead, Thanos. It's not a case that Thanos had to realise that he was physically dominated. He wasn't as strong as he wanted to be. It's a case of he just, well, fuck you, I win, that's why. What I would have liked is a case of Thanos... We, we have the situation where in the big final battle, Scarlet Witch does the thing that damages his armor. It doesn't rip it off entirely, because that's, that's, that's for the cast who are going to humiliate him to. I want him to be humiliated a little bit by Scarlet Witch as well, because she is a character reason for doing this to Thanos, so maybe we could have five versus one. That could also work. That could be interesting. Five versus one could also work against Thanos, and it could work. Um, so anyway, he's humiliated, and then he orders, orders a bombardment, and the, the battle continues with essentially the wizards, um, trying to essentially create a magical barrier that stops the bombardment. It builds up the tension because it's a case of how are you going to deal with the massive bombardment from Thanos' ship other than just Captain Marvel comes to the rescue? Well, I'll tell you how. The wizard's going to have to, to create a cover system for everyone. But then that causes the awkward situation of, yeah, but what about the people who are fighting outside of the cover? Ooh, that does cause an awkward situation now, doesn't it? Mm, yeah. That's why I don't want Captain Marvel to be in this, or at least be less overpowered. I'm perfectly fine if she's less overpowered. But anyway, we, we, we cut... Going back to the big massive final fight, Thanos has brought down almost everyone, and we, we have a cutback, we have a sort of like a callback to Avengers Infinity War, where it's just him and Iron Man left. There's the one, two people left. Thanos' army have managed to get hold of the Infinity Gauntlet, and Thanos is reaching for it, and in this moment, we're going to get the Batman versus Bane round two moment. But in this sec in this case, it's Thanos versus Iron Man round two. Well, because it's endgame, I guess you could say round three, but fuck it, who cares? Thanos is gonna be humiliated and humbled and put in his place by the person who he wants humiliated and humbled. Because nanites, uh, nanomachine son, <laughs> um, Tony sort of extends his arm outside of his suit, so to speak, grabs Thanos and pulls him away from the gauntlet. Um, and essentially, uh, Thor then at one point just crushes with the uh, with Stormbreaker and Yolnir, the people who were going to give the, um, the, the gauntlet to Thanos. And essentially, everyone then starts to just say, okay, get the, get the gauntlet away from these two. Uh, Tony, can you fight him? I'm gonna, and Tony just says, oh, I'm not just gonna fight him, I'm going to beat him. With, still in his armour and having his weapon, Thanos laughs at this. He's still the most indomitable person in all of the universe. Of course this will require stunt doubles, but at this point, honestly, fuck it, I don't care. I like the idea that after they met Thanos, because Tony did hint, okay, when you mess with time, time, time tends to mess back, it hints at the idea he knew this was going to happen the whole time. So what if, for the whole movie, Tony was preparing for a rematch? What if he had programmed into a suit, and also physically trained his own body as well, multiple martial arts? Harry, you're going to anime of this. Shut up! Listen to my idea. I like this idea. I think it would have made this amazing. What if, um, all of a sudden it's a case of the, the armor starts to really degrade, and Tony is ripping the armor to, sh to shit off of Thanos, Thanos is having to actually work for his victory against Tony Stark. He takes off his own helmet because the sweat is starting to make it difficult for him to see what's going on and the sweat's getting in his eyes from wearing his own helmet. So he takes the helmet off, his next vulnerable. Remember Stormbreaker at the beginning of the movie could, could decapitate him? Remember how in Infinity War everyone was able to work together to subdue Thanos, meaning he could actually be defeated, he actually has uh, weaknesses? Remember that? Well, this is gonna this is going to go somewhere now. So all of a sudden, his neck and face are all vulnerable because he, he, needs, he needs to be able to see what he's doing, so he's taking his helmet off. Um, so at one point then, all of a sudden, uh, it, Thanos tries to essentially decapitate Iron Man, but Iron Man grabs the handle of this blade, remember, more martial arts, pulls the blade off of him and throws it to one side. But you'll remember, sort of a Yolmir type situation, Thanos could pull the blade back to him, as soon as Tony realizes, oh, that's what you're doing with this sh with that's what you're doing, because he's an intelligent person, cursed with knowledge, he essentially just blasts it with only God knows how many different cannons and just destroys the fuck out of this weapon. Thanos now has to fight hand to hand against Tony Stark. 
Now, this is a much more powerful, improved version of Tony Stark, who already, when he was weaker back in Endgame, Endgame back in Infinity War, with Thanos who had Infinity Gauntlets, uh, the Infinity Gauntlet and Infinity Stones, he made Thanos bleed. All of a sudden, the tension's up. Who could, who's going to win? Who can win? Well, they both might win. They're both strong enough to win now. But everyone else is too injured to actually help in this fight, and everyone's backing off. And this fight is getting more and more desperate. And Thanos, Thanos is getting tired. He's being humbled for the first time in his life. For the first time in his life, the most powerful man in the whole universe has a tooth knocked out of his mouth. He looks at this tooth, and you see his eyes go wide. For the first time, he's struggling in a fight. For the first time, this god feels fear. Think of how powerful that would be. Think of how much everyone would sort of cheer in the cinema as soon as the case of... Imagine it's just a case of Tony just kicks him, like he did back in, in Infinity War. Kicks him, and he kneels down to the ground in pain. The tooth goes across the floor like that. Thanos sees it, and the eyes go wide. Can you imagine everyone just in the in the cinema or film theater just being like, Oh yeah! Yeah, go Iron Man! You know someone would. You know someone would. So, essentially he beats Thanos down. Thanos is thoroughly humiliated by the hero like Thane was in The Dark Knight Rises. Beats him to the point where he's delirious and just snapping his fingers away. Completely delirious with the armor broken and uh, Tony's just holding on to him there. Just like a case of just smashing into his face again. Like, I can imagine just in the anger in fights, just have at some point, just at some point, Tony's just that angry remembering what he did to Peter that it's just, he actually sort of just froths at the mouth. And, okay, maybe that might be too far, but just a few battle cries here and there as he's starting to actually overpower Thanos. Maybe a battle cry as Thanos is actually trying to crush Tony in the suit and he then just sort of. I hate saying this because people don't know that Japanese jiu-jitsu exists, but suck it. Judo throws him, or more accurately, as the original is, Japanese jiu-jitsu throws him onto the ground and then just starts standing on him with the Bleeding Edge improved version. I think it's, yeah, it's an improved version of the first one that he had in, 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 in Infinity War, I think it is. Just starts stamping on him, just completely humiliating Thanos. And when he's so beaten up that he may even have brain damage, he's completely delirious. He's snapping his fingers with nothing in his hand, saying, I am inevitable. Thor hands him the Infinity Gauntlet, and this tired out, injured version who just... This would, this would be how I would honestly direct it, just there would be a blood-covered eye implying that one of his eyes is now missing from this fight. The helmet comes off, and it shows this injured version of Tony Stark, gasping for breath, he just kneels down after he's given the Infinity Gauntlet. This would just be best. This would just be the best. After Thanos has said, I am inevitable, it's just... And fuck you. I am Iron Man. And then snap. After Thanos has been humiliated. After he's been humiliated. Just snap the fingers. And then, the, the two scenes, obviously, as I mentioned before, would have come together at this point the big massive war-like scene, and the everyone fighting Thanos scene both come together, Thanos then turns to dust as all his forces are turned to dust, and then Iron Man dies. That is how I would have preferred Avengers Endgame. Maybe I went overboard with some of the things I would change. I did joke around with the idea with um, uh, maybe foaming around at the mouth in anger at what um, Thanos did to Peter was a bit much. I, I, I joked! But I would have liked a few battle cries here and there, as it's just a case of you're not taking away from me my daughter, my wife, and my son. I mean, Peter Parker's not really Tony Stark's son, but in the MCU, he is Tony Stark's son. Let's be honest about this. They are father and son relationship all the way. Let's, let's, let's kind of be honest about this. And really, Tony was always meant to die in the MCU, and you might say like to yourself, well, why? If you've not seen the first movie, from movie one he was meant to die, the, both the beginning and the end. In Avengers Assemble, he was meant to die right at the end as well. Arguably, you could say at certain points that he was meant to die in other movies, but that's beside the point. 
And really because he is the father to Peter Parker, just as Uncle Ben was the father to Peter Parker, it really only makes sense that to be the true Peter, to, to boot there, sorry, to be the true Uncle Ben replacement figure, he needed to die for Peter Parker so that Peter could be the replacement and essentially inherit the position, so to speak, of the Iron Man mantle. For those of you who don't know, in the comics, they've come to be trying to find an Iron Man-like hero to replace Iron Man, as logically speaking, although time flows differently in Marvel comics, logically Iron Man will to eventually get too old to be Iron Man. They've tried to replace him by essentially having, well, Iron Man but younger and female and black. It really doesn't work, because what's the character reason for this person to replace him? Well. In the case of the MCU, we have Peter Parker, who essentially worships, worships Iron Man like a god, so to speak. I'm exaggerating, you know what I mean? <laughs> and sees him as a father-like figure who, he constantly looks up to Iron Man. Who is better of a replacement figure? Just Iron Man, but 15 years old and black and a girl? Or Peter Parker, who has been learning from Iron Man, who has been there for him every step of the way ever, ever since he was put in the MCU? It would just work so fucking well. It just works so well, the idea of he's essentially um, Peter Parker's Uncle Ben in the MCU, and essentially I would have just preferred it if Captain Marvel wasn't in the MCU at all, because I don't like it in the comics or in the movies. If Thanos would have just been humiliated by the characters in the final part of the movie, if there would have just been the war, the whole big massive battle war type situation, was done differently, and instead of Thanos just being snapped out of existence, he would have been humbled and had to have shown fear in his eyes and realised that he would have lost, that there would have been no way of handling it, because the thing is, is Thanos in the MCU has always been the strongest character imaginable. He's always been the best at fighting, he's always just been invincible and just physically indomitable. How powerful would it have been for him to be humiliated, to realise there's no way that he could win, that he is defeated. How, how terrifying would have that been if you've always been the strongest character in the story? Only to know that there's nothing you can do to win and that you're being crushed. How scary would that be? Can you imagine how powerful that would have been for the actual movie? Just the realisation on Thanos' face that he's going to lose. I loved that. But hey, Maybe that's just me, and maybe you all have a different opinion to me, but I would have honestly loved the line as well of the and fuck you, I'm Iron Man, and then snap. I mean, and I am Iron Man works as well, but and fuck you, I am Iron Man just works better to me. I, I, I just kind of prefer it more. Maybe I'm just a crazy madman that just thinks, you know what, sack it, just let the adults view this movie, but eh. To each is their own, I guess. Anyway, I've been recording this for too long, it's probably over half an hour long now. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed my rambling of madness and insanity, and, uh, well, perhaps I'm not the, the worst person when it comes for ideas for a, uh, a what's it called a movie ending, who knows. Maybe you've actually really enjoyed this, or maybe you're absolutely hateful for the idea. Tell me what you think, because honestly... I'm not saying that Avengers Endgame is terrible, what I'm saying is it could have been better, if you know what I mean.